Hello again, everyone. In part one, we discuss the methodology in a nutshell. We also discuss the very basics of trading. So you might want to go back and watch that to get up to speed. Uh, we'll do a brief recap here on the what I call the methodology in a nutshell. And then we're going to get into trend qualifiers, trend resumption patterns, uh, including the TKO and persistent pullbacks. And we're also going to talk about the three phases of trend. Thank you so much and I hope you enjoy. So again, you want to wait for an entry, trail that stop higher, take partial profits, get that stop up to break even when you're taking the partial profits. And then once this, or if this I should say, begins to materialize, you kind of relax, haha, -ha, I know, and you let this stop widen out. Now longer term, this stop is going to look like a very long term moving average. And a lot of people ask me that when they first see me draw the stop in on a chart. They're like, is that a moving average? And I'm like, no, that's actually me eyeballing the chart and determining where my stop should be. Okay. So it all boils down to identifying a significant trend. I'm sorry, identifying a trend or a significant change in trend. Now, by change in trend, I mean a trend transition and emerging trend. And we're going to look at that in just one second. And then you want to enter that trend on a pullback. Money and position management are key. And then psychology is the ability to execute and follow that plan. Now let's look at this trend qualifying chart real quick. I've, I've talked about this chart forever. I beat it up quite a bit. The reason I like it is because you have a trend develops and all of a sudden it kind of dies out, which is exactly what we're going to see tomorrow quite a bit in the IPOs. At point A back here, we're just kind of going sideways. There's certainly no trend. Now we have a base breakout. Now with the core methodology, or you're trading, a, or if you want to look at it as trading an established issue out there, trading breakouts, although it worked in this particular case, is usually a bad idea. Tomorrow I'm going to show you some breakout characteristics that are worthwhile trading in IPOs. So you get a little base breakout, and then the stock begins to trend afterwards. You start getting a wide range bar, meaning that the bars look like this and all of a sudden you have a wide range bar. And then it, they begin to close higher. Notice it closes towards the top of the range. You've got a little pullback here and then the stock begins to take off again. You've got a gap here, you've got another gap here, you've got a strong close, meaning that it's closing towards the top of its range. So these things are telling you that a trend is developing or there's a trend in place. Okay, and back here, this first pullback after base breakout, that could be a pretty good pattern of trade. So you got a market that's doing this, and then you get a breakout, that first little pullback. Don't enter here, because more often than not, it'll come back into the base, okay? I probably should have drawn the base like this, okay? You'll, you'll see a lot of this. But as soon as you see this, once it clears that base decisively, then maybe look to get in on a pullback. Now notice towards the end of this trend it gaps higher and it shoots even higher, okay, but by the end of the day it closes poorly, meaning that the close of the chart is down towards the lows, okay. So that tells me that maybe this move has exhausted itself. I would never ever trade on a one or even a, a one bar pattern as a reversal type of pattern. Now I'll show you some one bar patterns once you get them in a trend, okay. Uh, like a TKO, which we'll look at in a second. But if you've got a market that's doing this, and then you get a one-bar pattern like that, well, we're looking for a reversion to the mean back the direction of the trend. But if you get a one-bar pattern that looks like this, even if it closes poorly or whatever, that doesn't mean that that market has turned, okay? You need further confirmation. In this particular case, that market lapped higher, lap mean, meaning a gap, but not above the prior day's high. And then it came back in and it closed poorly. Now at this juncture, within the next day or so, we're like, wait a minute, this thing looks like it's a major reversal. The stock pulls back a little bit, triggers what I call a first thrust. We'll look at those in one second. And then begins to sell off. So you can see that the trend materialized, ran up for a little ways. Oh, I don't know, 300% and then began to implode. And by the way, this stock no longer exists. Now another way, another thing that's good when it comes to trend is persistency. Mathematically, this is equivalent to linear regression. It's what's called a least squares method. Oops. 
where you just you can just draw a line through as many bars as you can. Okay, through being the key word in that sentence. And again, it's mathematically equivalent to linear regression. Don't get caught up in the math. Just draw your line through as many bars as you can. If it market tends to go up day after day after day after day after day, then that's a market that you want to be in, provided, of course, you get a setup and an entry, and you use a stop just in case. If it goes down day after day after day, it's a market that you might want to be shorting. Now, I'm not a big fan of indicators. I kind of view indicators as what I call illustrators. They illustrate what's already happening in the market. Remember that an indicator is a derivative of price. And then some people have derivatives, uh, derivatives of derivatives, meaning that they have indicators based on indicators. And I was guilty of that a long time ago. And I even did some recursive indicators, which an indicator recurs on indicator recurs on indicator. That's how complex that I, I was making my life. Oh, I don't know. 18, 19, 20 years ago when I was trying to figure it all out. It took me a long time to get rid of all that stuff. But view indicators as illustrators, meaning they illustrate what's already going on in the chart. Moving averages can be quite useful to keep you on the right side of the market. Now, we're not going to find much use in a moving average tomorrow in a lot of the stocks because they're brand new and they don't have a history and no moving average. Now, all indicators have lag because they are a derivative of price. But the beauty of a moving average is sometimes it might begin to roll over or you might get a crossover. And if you're just looking at the chart, you might see like something like this in the chart, okay? And you might just you might be seeing that longer term trend. That's just sticking out in your mind, that big arrow that I like to draw. But you might not notice that over more recent times, it's sort of begun or has begun to slow down a little bit. So sometimes that moving average can alert you to that. So I always look at a blank chart first, and then occasionally I throw a moving average in. Okay, um, maybe a little bit more often, more often than occasionally, but I would say more often than not, I'm looking at a blank chart. But every now and then I'll throw. A moving average in. Now there's two important concepts when it comes to moving average. Slope and daylight. Okay. Daylight is simply the lows are greater than the I'm sorry, lows are yes. The low of the price bar is greater than the moving average. If you held it up to a to a window with sunlight coming in, you'd have daylight, okay, in between the lows and the moving average. This is daylight here. And then the slope is just what direction is that moving average headed. Now there's gonna be lag, don't get me wrong, but the direction is important, and daylight's going to happen quickly, okay? Daylight means that you'll have daylight occur with no lag whatsoever because price will just pop up. So this is one aspect, and this is, um, this is why I love teaching because it's something I never really thought about. Daylight is a zero lag type of indica indication with an indicator, if that makes any sense. Now, slope will be a little quicker, a little slower to catch up. But notice that this moving average was flat back here, and then you began to get daylight, okay? You had three bars of daylight. So, aha, price is beginning to take off. And then later on, we see, yep, that's confirmed by a positive slope in the moving average, okay? So let's take a look at our chart from earlier, and you can see, that you had a little daylight above, but it never really did get past its prior highs. And you had a little daylight below, and it never really did get past its prior lows. And then when the stock begins to break out, you, you get a lot of daylight in here, okay? In fact, believe it or not, except for this one little what I call a kiss, this one little kiss of the moving average, your 10-day moving average, it stayed above, the low stayed above. You had daylight for the entire period. So that's a pretty impressive run. So just by following the slope of the moving averages, just by looking at the daylight, you could see that a very nice trend can be captured. By the way, if you're ever watching a presentation, and I don't want to pick on anyone too much, okay, but I've seen this happen quite a bit, where somebody will show you their system and they'll have like a buy and a sell and a buy and a sell and a buy and an exit and a buy and a sell, you know, over and over and over and over and over again. Look for something simple like daylight, okay, and say, well, if you'd have just bought where you had this daylight here, 
that would have kept you in that for a long, long time, especially if you're using like a 20-day exponential moving average. This trend began when the market broke out above this 20. We didn't know it at the time. We're followers. Wait for a little bit more confirmation. But you can see that it broke out above its 20-day EMA, and it stayed there for a long, long time. So if there's a moving average in the chart and somebody showed you their latest and greatest system, you know, don't be a jerk about it or whatever. Maybe talk to them on the side. But notice just, or don't even talk to them, but notice for your own amusement how something as simple as a moving average can keep you on the right side of the market. I did a wrote an article in 19, I think it was 1995, um, for stocks and commodities called a 220 EMA breakout system. And you can find it on the internet. You can get it for about a buck fifty. I won't make any money on that, so I'm not pimping it, obviously. But uh, it's a it's a cool little system. Back when I was doing some mechanical testing, and it's based only on daylight and a moving average. So you might want to check that out and keep it in your um, arsenal. Now, usually I have a pop quiz at this point in time, where I'll ask what this is and what this is and what this is. But I think by now you should know that's an uptrend, that's a downtrend, that's a sideways. Trend. So you should be able to draw a big arrow on the chart in the direction of the trend, if there is one, right? Uh, that's the back of my business card. If you want a business card, you could send me a self-addressed envelope to P.O. Box 298. And the town is a beta, which means, I think, life and... and um, Italiano. Louisiana. And it's 70420. Okay. Now there are three phases of trend that are tradable, I should say. There's trend resumption, where a market rallies, pullback. This is gonna be a generic pullbacks. There's trend acceleration where a market rallies, begins to take off, pulls back, and then takes off again. And then there's trend transition or emerging trends where you have an uptrend and it begins to fizzle out, and then a downtrend begins. Or you have a downtrend that begins to sort of bottom out, and then an uptrend begins. Let's talk about trend resumption real quick. Now, two of my favorite patterns, other than generic pullbacks, are TKOs and persistent pullbacks when it comes to trading trends. So TKO, you're looking for this big arrow on the chart. You're looking for that. You're looking for this to be much higher than this. Okay. You always need to ask, is the right side of the chart higher than the left? And if you find a broker that will let you trade off the left side of the chart, please give me a phone call, okay? One of you may get that. Uh, anyway, we're looking for a knockout move. Now, this move needs to be significant. It needs to take out at least two of the prior lows, and this should happen on a – wide range bar. It should happen on expansion of range. And what happens is you have all these happy little trend followers and all of a sudden, bam, and they get knocked out, or some of them at least get knocked out. And all of a sudden you get some eager shorts in here thinking that, oh, it's time has come. This company is stupid. They confuse the issue with facts. They confuse that piece of paper called the stock, or a little electronic blip now called the stock, with the actual company. Okay, or vice versa, however you want to look at it. So they're like, this company will never be profitable, will never cure cancer. It's got a PE of 100. They're making burritos, for goodness sakes. So they're going to rush out. When they see the little one-bar pattern, they're going to rush out and try to short that market. Well, guess what? If that market begins to rally, when that high gets taken out, those shorts are going to be hurt and pop. And anyone knocked out needs to think whether or not they want to get back in. The longs that are knocked out need to think whether or not they want to get back in. One way of knowing if the move was significant is if you get stopped out of the move. If your stops are properly placed at a fair amount away distance from the market, if you get knocked out, then you'll know that that was a pretty good good knockout move, right? That's one. That's at least my gauge because I know my stops are going to be fairly liberal. Now, I'll get stopped out, and so what? You know, I, it's a pick yourself up, dust yourself off, whatever Tosh and Jagger sang about years ago, and you start all over again. But, hey, you know what? I'll come back in after TKO. I got knocked out and say, man, that sucked. I actually dropped an F-bomb or two, truth be told. 
But then by the end of the day, I'm like, well, you know what? It looks like a TKO. So many times I'll come right back in after that knockout move and get back in here. Let's take a look at a, an example or two. Uh, this one's kind of cool because the trend is accelerating, as you can see, higher. Okay? And then it has a nice little knockout move here. And then it's a little bit of a slow start. But you can see the trend did take off afterwards. Okay? Um, this, one's could have, this one's almost on the cusp of being too extreme, and we're going to talk a lot about this one in a few more minutes. But what I liked about this one was you had this massive knockout move in this accelerating trend. And I didn't check the news, but when I see something like that, that tells me, especially the fact that it closed all the way back here, that tells me that there was some sort of news in this stock, and everybody rushed to the door at the same time to sell it. And then that selling exhausted itself, and people actually realized that, well, wait a minute, maybe this stock is still worthwhile. So that bad news got rinsed out of the system really quick. It took out a lot of players. It sucked in a lot of shorts really quick. And this is what happened afterwards in this particular setup. Now, this is the trailing stop here. We'll get to that in just a minute. Now, a couple of notes on TKOs. It, it can be a very common pattern if you're just looking for a two-bar knockout. So if you set your scanning software to two-bar knockout, you're going to get a plethora of setups every day, and 99.9% .9 aren't going to be worth trading. Okay, So you want to make sure that that's an expansion of range, that people actually got knocked out of it, and you want to see the most strongest and persistent trends. So you want to make sure that the knockout move is meaningful and the trends are persistent. It could be a really good pattern doing a blow-off move. Sometimes you'll get a market, and it just starts accelerating higher, and then, bam, you get a TKO, and everybody and their brother thinks, that's it. That's it. The, the, these burritos are no good. You can't have a PE of 5,000 or 500, whatever it is. We're going to short the mess out of this stock. We're going to catch a top. And then what happens? You get a TKO triggers, and all of a sudden that stock goes straight up. Okay, so it can be really good to get you in that blow-off move. You got a blow-off move begins to unfold, bam, you get the TKO, and then the market takes off once again. Now, persistent pullbacks, very, very, very simple pattern. Again, you're drawing that linear regression, but I just like to do it by drawing a line through as many bars as possible. And then you're looking for a pullback. The best pattern I like with this is like a TKO. You get a nice persistent move, then you get that TKO pattern. And then you look to enter when the trend or as the trend begins to resume. Okay? This is a bit of a dated example, but you can see that this market was in a very nice persistent uptrend. Just went up day after day after day after day after day. And then you get a knockout move. If you're familiar with some of my other stuff, it kind of looks like a double top knockout where you have a, a top and then you have some separation in between, then you have that second top, and then you have the knockout move. Call it a double top knockout, which which sucks in even more people thinking that the market has topped. Okay? And uh, here's an example on the short side of a persistent. I'm sorry, that last one was a TKO, but it's also persistent. Notice how persistent this move was higher. Now, this is a little bit rarer on the short side because the short side normally does this, and then it does this, and then it does this. It's harder to trade on the short side than the long side. Doesn't mean that you shouldn't short. We are short a position right now, and it's been chopping around like a crazy thing. Okay, but but you should all you should play both sides of the market if you want to survive longer term. But the short side is a little tougher, and then you're going to find that these persistent pullbacks don't happen very often on the short side. But you can see when they do, they're pretty cool and they can work. And this actually made a persistent pullback, pullback, and then continued to persist lower. That's even more rare for a short. Now, you're looking at this one and you're probably thinking, well, that's not the most persistent stock that I've ever seen, and you're right. But it's fairly persistent given the fact that this is a this is a gold stock, okay? And gold could be choppy and efficient and chop around quite a bit. Uh, and gold is efficient, I should say. It chops around quite a bit. So gold stocks following the underlying metal can be kind of choppy and uh and when, it, when they do trend. But this is a fairly persistent trend. You could draw a trend line through most of the bars. And by the way, 
Um, if you have Metastock or Telechart, you could do a linear regression trend line, as I often show in the presentations, and I do one by hand real quick, and then I'll do one with the software, and they're, they're, they're pretty much in line with each other. And it's something fun to kind of play with. Like sometimes what I'll do, or I have done in the past, I should say, is I'll draw like a five-day linear regression, a 10-day linear regression, a 20, a 30, a 40, even longer. And what will happen is you'll get a bunch of little lines on your chart showing you longer-term trend, shorter-term trend. And it's kind of fun to play around with. But, again, you got to be careful that you don't end up with the chart that we started off with at the beginning of the presentation. So I'll go from a blank chart to a linear regression chart uh, just for fun every now and then. But it's something to play with. So the good thing about uh, persistent pullbacks is they're self-regulating. You're going to get more in good conditions and fewer in bad conditions. So that's great for the beginning trader. Um, in 2008, when the market lost 50% uh, of its value, I don't remember. Now, somebody might prove me wrong, but I don't remember once that early into 2008, once that move got started. In fact, it actually got started in 2007. So I think it's safe to say 2008, there were no persistent pullbacks on the upside. There were no buy signals for the entire year of 2008. So that one pattern would have kept you out of the market, alongside at least, for the entire year. So that means that you'd have beat about 95% of all money managers just by following this one pattern. So it is self-regulating. It's a great place to start, and it's a great place to come back to. As I said earlier in this presentation, I know your eyes are going to glaze over. For those of you who already know the methodology, uh, when I go through all these basics, but sometimes you need to hear the basics. A stock is not the company, and a company is not the stock. Sometimes something simple like persistency. When you find yourself plotting that 15th oscillator, and you're not making any money, and you're scratching your head and wondering why, and you can't figure out if you're in a third of a fifth or a fifth of a third when it comes to your count, then stop doing all that and look for some persistency in the chart. Look to draw an arrow on your chart. So come back to something simple. And if you, if you got into a drawdown, and you were, especially if you're following something more, complex, then take a step back, look at what you're doing, and make sure you're not ignoring the basics and watching something like persistency. I think if you just had to trade one pattern, this would be it. Um, I would recommend anyone brand new to trading just to do this. So I know most of you here, I recognize all your names here, or for the most part, I'd say almost all of you. Um, if you do someone who wanted to trade, just... Uh, get the pattern off my website, I think it's somewhere on there, or just email me, I'll send it to you, and say, look, this is just do this for a year, and get good at doing this, and become successful at this. It amazes me that if you're not successful with one pattern, what makes you think you're going to be successful with 10, but I digress. So again, if you just trade one pattern, I think this would be it. And it's especially powerful when combined with persistency in the market and the representative sector. That doesn't happen very often. I've done a few columns, and a few being a key word in that sentence, over the years, where the overall market is set up as a persistent pullback, the sector is set up as a persistent pullback, and the stock is set up as a persistent pullback. So if you can get all three set up, then I'm not going to say load the boat, but I'm going to say that your chances of winning on that trade are probably pretty darn good. This concludes Section 2. In Section 3, we're going to look at the other two phases of trend, which are trend acceleration and trend transition or emerging trends. For trend acceleration, we're going to look at the accelerating momentum strategy. And for emerging trends or trend transition, we're going to look at two of my favorite patterns there, the first thrust and the bow tie. Thank you so much.